and welcome to My Xbox and Me, episode 185. I am one of your hosts, MC Fixer, alongside uh, Two Fresh Crash. Uh, how are you, <laughs> Crash? I don't like how that sounded. <laughs> not Two Fresh Crash, I'm not going to lie. It's going to stick. I like it. Oh, man. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. How are you, Crash? You good? I'm doing good. I mean, we recorded... When did we record last week's episode? Sunday. Uh... Friday? Is it Sunday? Oh no, it might have been last Friday. I really did honestly, one on a Friday. I don't, I don't. All my days are all over the place. I think it was last Friday. I feel like I've not spoken to you in ages though. Yeah. Like it's, uh, this is a since real the podcast. It's a whole that's what I'm saying. It's like since last Friday, and now we're back yeah. here again. It's like that's actually a really long time for us. So yeah. me and two fresh crush, we're just taking over the world oh, now. <laughs> <laughs> just, it does not sound right. Yeah, I like it. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's better when you just say it like that, though, because the first time you stop for a second. I was reading like, it. That's why I didn't, I didn't remember it. I'm, now it's coming back. Now it's coming back. Uh, remember, you can get this show early over on patreon.com slash mcfixer. It is literally what keeps the lights on. And trust me, if we don't get more support, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be honest with you. Um,. You can get the show everywhere. iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, and Spotify every Friday. And uh, make sure you go support the YouTube channels, youtube.com slash mcfixer, um, and twitch.tv slash crashnick. Plays? Just crashnick. Yeah, we're getting yeah, there. We're getting yeah, there. Yeah. Uh, let's get into the topic of the show this week, Crash. How, how, anyway, yeah, forget how are you. Let's talk about okay. Ghost Recon. I was at an event because I'm a big boy on campus. Nah, it's not true. It's not true. So, <laughs> someone slid into my DMs and was like, hey, do you want to come to a Ghost Recon uh, event? And I was like, no, that isn't even what I said. It's like, do you want to come to an event in London? And I was like, sure. But we found out that it was Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Uh, have you seen the trailer for it? Uh, yes, I watched the uh, you watched the reveal, yeah. The did, re- did you stream it or did you just watch the reveal? Just watch it. So, <laughs> I was at an event for it and uh, it was laggy for us, so it kept buffering no. and it went down to 360p. And Ooh. again, you, this is what happens when you go into these type of events. It was like a gaming pub bar thing. Um, got it, you're only as good as the internet will let you. And if you when you've got everyone on your internet as well because you've got a free Wi Fi connection, it happens, it's gonna um, yeah, right. But I've watched it again since. But yeah, so I got invited to the uh, Ubisoft UK Ghost Recon event for those who want full disclosure for things like that. I wasn't paid, nothing like that. And all my opinions here, you will get. I was open with them when we were talking. So I spoke to a couple of the uh, PR people. It's like, oh, did you like Wildlands? And I was like, I enjoyed the beginning of Wildlands until I realized there was no story there. Like that, for me, was the big no-no. The gameplay itself, I don't think, was the big... The big thing that disappointed me it was more the lack of uh, content and the lack of different yeah. content that was there. It was very much jump in an aeroplane, go to this place, do this, jump back in the aeroplane, go to that place, do this. That's how we played the game, unfortunately, because yeah. the game didn't force you to play it any other way. It felt very light in, it, not yeah. in direction, but in no. like what you should do. Yeah. So, obviously, watching this, um, I think we'll give our opinions and I'll go through what it actually is. Uh, what did you think of the reveal? As someone who I convinced you to get Ghost Recon, and right. you are pissed at me for it still to this day. <laughs> I'll never let you live it I, out. Exactly. Um, so, how do you feel about this one? I actually, I like the look of it, yeah. to be honest. Um, it's pre, uh, pre-alpha, was it pre-alpha or alpha game? Pre-alpha, it said, but it pre- looked beautiful. Yeah, so... Yeah, it looked really good. I, there were a lot of like subtle animations that they did that I thought it all looked really cool. Yeah. But what'll make it in the into the final game? Will we see all that or will it not? Yeah. Um, but I like the concept of it. I like the gameplay. I like uh, they have John Bernthal as the main villain. Yeah. Um, I really like that. Punisher for um, those who don't know who that is, or um, yeah. Shane from The Walking Dead. Yeah. Um, I like that they mentioned raids. I'm like a, a game where I can raid and I don't have to grind. Presumably, I don't know if it has. Well, it's class based, like so we don't right. know any of that yet. Exactly. So, so I assume we'll learn all that at E3, which is yeah. less than a month away now. Which is crazy. is it really? Oh less man, than a month we're away so now. close. I know, dude. Uh-huh. I remember when we were sitting there bitching like, "Oh, I wish E3 was here," and now it's already here. I'm like. Oh god, sleepless nights yeah. and editing and opinion piece videos and everything. But yeah, I really want to go ham this this time. Um, but yeah, like we said beforehand, I really liked what I saw. Um, and when I was talking to people at the event that I was at, um, the vibe of what a lot of people were saying and the underlying tones when we were speaking was, it seems like it's a mixture of all of the Tom Clancy's games. 
um john the uh, pr uh, gentleman who i use um who invited me to the event that's what he said and he said like it seems like they've they've really taken aspects from division taken aspects from uh, rainbow six and taken aspects from wildlands which in all is a really good thing um, yeah i think you saw that in the trailer itself which was like the fact of like peeking around corners a little bit which was like okay that's very rainbow six like uh obviously division um with like the raid and stuff like that. i know we haven't got it yet but that whole aspect of it um end game content again is going to be key for a game like this yeah. but i really like the concept of what they've done so far which is the flipping of the hunter is being the hunted. I actually yes. quite like that, and it, it should add for some good gameplay moments. Um, obviously, there was some stuff that it looked really cool, but in practice, I don't think it's going to be that great. Like the whole laying in mud and rubbing mud over you. I just yeah. don't know how many people are going to play Ultra. like that when. Yeah. Maybe I'm, I'm the outlier when it comes to stealth. I'm not going to lie. Like, stealth is right. not. I even said it when we were watching. Me and Hayley were standing there watching it with, some, with a, a gentleman who's a streamer called Tom Wild next to us. And I was like, yeah, that's not me. I'm, I'm going in guns blazing. I'm the grenade yeah. launcher guy, like, literally right. blowing things up. And everyone's like, fix up. Except you don't wait for everybody to be in position. Exactly. Uh, yeah, when I was watching the gameplay, I was like, this all looks really cool. Mm -hmm. um, but who's actually going to set up like that? Exactly. There'll be people who do it. Yeah. It just won't be a lot of people. No, that's not that's not how every, the everyday consumer is going to play Ghost Recon Wildlands, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, Ghost Recon uh, Breakpoint, sorry. Um, I think the other thing uh, is that it looked amazing, in my opinion. It looked really pretty. But remember, that was up without a HUD. That was like, and I even said that like during the reveal. It's like, man, games look so good without HUDs. I really hope they keep it minimalistic. It's so hard, though. I don't like, think they will, yeah. It's so hard. It's still uh, a video game. Another thing is also, like, part of it's on us. A lot oh. of games have the option to make it super minimalistic. I never go into the menu to check that option. I think the best one was Division. If you go into Division 2's menus, um, you can move everything around. So, oh, and as really? a streamer, that's amazing. Because sometimes, when I used to use my green screen and, like the light would come through to the sun. I'd have to move my camera to the left and like it would block stuff. Now you can literally move everything that's on the HUD. You can move it around, which right. is really cool. You can get it to show more stats. You can get it to show what skills people are using. I hope that's something they carry on to most of their games going forward because it really helps yeah. for streamers, definitely. And for people that just don't want certain aspects of things up on the life. Some people don't want to see what skills are on there. Some people don't care about seeing what their teammates' names are because they know who it is, but... Yeah, it was it's right. interesting, and I wonder if it will go forward. Um, to go into this though, Ghost Recon Breakpoint gameplay revealed, uh, release date announced as well. Uh, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint, a follow up to Ghost Recon Wildlands, has been revealed. Breakpoint is set on a fictional archipelago, pargo, or of a oh, did you, did you can you say that any better? I, I can't say yeah. that. I cannot say that. Uh, the Pacific Ocean set for release on October 4th for PC, Xbox One, and PS4. The game will follow on from Wildlands by allowing four-player uh, co-op across its stealth action-focused open world. And it will also uh, launch with a PvP mode. New features include class systems, although you can swap between uh, between these freely, uh, a loot in the open world, so there you go, uh, light survival okay. elements, and prone camo the ability to slaver yourself in mud to avoid detection post launch uh, the game will also uh, add end game raids breakpoint uh, catches up with the wildlands team leader norman i didn't even realize that guy had a name if i'm being honest with you like that's how much wildlands to me there just there was nothing it there was, for the story uh, but yeah um yeah, yeah, yeah. to go on against uh, the rogue ghost uh, cole d walker played by the punishers john how do you say his last name Brenthal. Brenthal, thank you. Who was introduced to Wildlands last week. I like what they did with the whole bringing him into Wildlands. Um, for people, yeah. obviously, I know we're not still playing, and I'm sure a lot of people listening to this are not still playing. But for the people that are still playing, it is kind of cool to have a character that they're building a lore for it already, obviously, with, like, he was a ghost, and you know, they've put him in the other game. It's like, okay, cool. And I'm sure there's other things they've added to that game as well that will even more so bring while make uh breaking point feel like a sequel so it's actually yeah. quite interesting i like what they've done there um is it gonna be good i don't know and i think yeah. that's the again i don't think wildlands is bad 
but Agreed. but it's just it wasn't the experience i was hoping for again from the conversations i was having it seems like it's very much more story driven cut scenes things of that nature which is what i they said uh there's dialogue options as well and stuff like that which i, I was so, yeah yeah i was a bit shocked so um, but i think it, they have all the pieces to make a really good game well, yeah, Ghost Recon itself as a franchise is big enough. It's, Wildlands, we know, sold like wildfire, which is crazy. Uh, excuse the pun. Uh, and I'm just, I'm interested. I am. I'm very interested to see who this is for. Is this for the hardcore gamer? Is this for the um, people that do want to do get slammed in mud and do want to be very stealthy? Or can four friends just get together and play and muck around and do what they do? Which Wildlands is great at. You can do that in Wildlands. Yeah. So, yeah. is there anything we missed that you you uh, saw during the, um, the reveal? Uh, I just want to shout out the fact that you can pick up a down, a down teammate and uh, bring them to safety. That was cool. More games need that. That was cool. Yeah, Division needs that. Yeah. That would be very <laughs> nice. Um, but I feel like every all these games of service are now getting there, right? They're getting um, there, and they're getting to that point where it's like, okay, we need to focus on Endgame. We need to focus yeah. on Endgame. As well as the huge story, and I think Division, again, Division did a great job with it, which is the, the story was good. Um, nothing special, but the story was good. And then we get to Endgame, and it's still... I've stopped playing, and I know a few of us have stopped playing because we got to 500, and then we were working on builds, and we stopped. But yeah, I feel like they did a great job. I mean, I got 100 hours out of Division 2, and there's still more content oh. to come. So yeah, I can't sit here and be like, "Oh, there's not enough content when you've done a hundred hours." Right. So, um, yeah, yeah. I I do think that we're getting to a good spot with uh, games in terms of end game. Even like single player games are finding their own way to add end game. I think at the end of the day, people are holding on to games longer, and especially yeah. with the digital uh, world, it's like you want people to live in you those don't sell them back. longer. We don't sell them back. Yeah. You still have them. Um, it's even like Wildlands. I've still got my Wildlands. I know you have, and it's like I was like, oh, maybe I will go back and just to just to see what's changed and to That's to have I'm, a look. Um, I've been looking for a new game. I'm sure there's stuff yeah. on that map I still need to do. Maybe I do jump in there and just give it a go. Uh, the John Bernthal DLC for Wildlands is free as well. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so yeah, maybe so. you go in there, you do that, get prepared for for Breakpoint. Yeah. I'd love to hear what people think of this. So please do email in my Xbox and me podcast at gmail dot com. I would love to hear people's thoughts. Did you like what you saw? Uh, is it your type of game? Are you scared that you're going to need people to play it with? Because it seemed like that wasn't the case. It seemed like single player would be fine. Uh, but yeah, I'd love to hear it. So send in your questions uh, at my Xbox and me podcast at gmail dot com. Moving on, Crash. What is in your box? What have you been playing this week, dude? Uh. More Mortal Kombat, to no one's surprise. Still haven't beat the story. I haven't touched the story since I last why? time. Why? Is it, is, is it the story um, bad? Or you said you, you liked it's an action flick. Is that just why? It's like, I don't need it? Uh, yeah. I'm not like I'm not a super like action flick type of guy. When I'm in the mood for it, I'm in the mood for it. So Go I'm ahead. sure at some point, I'll be like, I'm in the mood to play Mortal Kombat story, and I'll finish whatever I have. I think you're about halfway, you said, right? Yeah. I got the... Literally, I stopped after I got the achievement that says uh, halfway there. So. Just keep going. Just get it done, <laughs> dude. What is it with you? You don't like completing things. I I like I like playing people in the game. That guy. Yeah, see, yeah, you. That's like me it's a fighting FIFA. game. That's like me and FIFA. If like I didn't do the FIFA story mode this year, because like, oh yeah, I just play ultimate team and play online. Like it's the same sort of concept. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that. Uh, anything else? Uh, Dragon Ball Fighters dropped its new uh, character. I okay. Played him for a bit. Any good? Um, fun. Good. Um. I haven't played the game too much, so I don't know how he actually fits into the online and everything. Just messed around with what the What was character. the character they added anyway? Uh, Goku. Oh, okay. Young Goku. Little Goku. It, like the 10th Goku in the game. <laughs> I, bro, are you, don't I worry about Dragon Ball Z, like... <laughs> it was, There's a lot of... You, that question was more for the audience and not for me, I'll be honest. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I've, I used to watch Dragon Ball Z and I remember they being like, old Goku, young Goku, middle-aged Goku, Goku with a different haircut. I'm like, oh... Does this matter? There's is, a, is, 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 this game has a lot of Goku's in it. I will um, let you know. Okay, um, I'm sure that I'm sure you guys that love Dragon Ball Z love it, and I am not here to rain on your parade. That is not why I'm here. So enjoy. Um, I'll be honest with you. For me, I have sort of, and I said this on stream a couple of days ago. I've fallen out of love with games right now. I'm in this very weird period in my life. Um, 
due to a multiple of things, not just, but like, obviously video games are my business and that's what I do for work. I play video games on stream and things of that nature. And I've got to the point where I'm like, I don't know if it's a case that there's nothing out because there, there's obviously Shadows Die Twice, there's Devil May Cry, um, Kingdom Hearts 3. There's, there's plenty of games I could go back and get and play and be very happy with, I'm sure. But I'm, I'm at this point where all I'm playing is Football Manager and I'm enjoying playing Football Manager. Um, and unfortunately, with with what I do, and obviously, is I need to be on trend and on on point of like, I need to be playing the newest games and such of that nature. And I'm just like, I don't really want to play anything. Anything. I, I, I feel like, I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's because I haven't got a squad of people to play with. And please add me, XOB space fixer, and just send me a message saying you're from my Xbox and me, or jump in my Twitch chat. Um, I don't know what it is, but I can't seem to get going again. And it's been like that since Division 2. And since I since I finished Division 2, I'm sort of like, oh, yeah, I don't I don't know what to play. I don't know what to do. I feel like that ha- that's happened to me with games before mm. as well. Where it's like, I don't want to play anything else. And I'll go to like an old, like, guilty pleasure game or whatever and Rune just escape. stick to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. And it's like, I'm not really like, I've played this before. Or I've done it before. And it's nothing new. But it's yeah. like, I enjoy it enough. And all the new games coming out, I look at them and I'm like, you look cool, but I'm not going to enjoy you right now. We're definitely in a point where we're at the end of the generation. We're at that point where everyone's holding their cards really tight to their chest. And everyone's just like, let's just wait. We're going to announce a new console very, 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 very soon. And that's when all the coolest stuff Um, will be hoping that I'm hoping that that will super just make me jump. And that will be like, all right, cool, here we go, because I'll need content, and I'll have games to play, and I'll have people to play yeah. it with, and stuff like that. And uh, I played a bit of Borderlands, I went back and finished the pre-sequel, I finally finished that. Big, oh, you big, finished it big, completely? Yeah, I got, I got uh, carried through by Rampage, so big shout yeah. out to Rampage, who literally, he was one-shotting bosses for me, and stuff of that nature. But I finally got the story, and now... It, it's not a story you need, but it's actually quite interesting, the stuff that, that was there. So I'm glad that I've done that. Um, I'm looking forward to going back and doing the DLC with you, the Tiny Tina DLC. And, and I'm really excited for free. So yeah. I'm, I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting for some other games. But yeah, I'm just, I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's, is it me? As in, I don't know what to play. Or I try and reach out to like the audience as I'm talking to you guys now. And I'm like, what should we play? And everyone's like, yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm doing my own thing. Want. Yeah, play what you yeah. want. And I'm like, no, no, you're not understanding me. Like, I want, I'm like, the relationship that we have is we're friends and that's that's how this is. So I'm, as a friend, I'm coming to you and like, what should we play? And then, play, and, yeah. and then like, I find in my, like, especially in my audience, it's like, oh, just do what you like. Whatever makes you happy. I'm like, I am currently not happy in a lot of aspects. <laughs> help me type thing. Yeah. So yeah, it's, um, it's definitely hard. It's definitely hard. So I just, I just want if you are someone like if you're in the same situation as me, and you're you're falling out of not I don't think falling out of love with games is the right word, but you're you've hit this this slump. Please message me anywhere, Facebook, Twitter, Xbox, whatever it is, because I'd love to get us all together and play. I will jump in Xbox party chat. I hate it, but I will do yeah. it. That's how you know he means it. <laughs> That's how you know he means it. Seriously, He's yeah. I'll get, him, I'll get a party, party chat and won't do Discord. Um, and let's, seriously, let's come together and find something for us all to play. I don't care what it is. If it's PUBG again, or, or Fortnite, or um, if we go play Elder Scrolls Online. Doesn't matter. We've all got, I'm sure a lot of us have got Game Pass. I just want to find something for us to play, especially in this drought period. So please hit me up if you've got something in mind that you want to play. You can be on every night at this time to this time, and we can make it work. So please do hit me up. Doesn't matter where, but please hit me up. Yeah, so I've got nothing really to pl- talk about. I played. I've, I've been playing again. I've been doing stuff for work, so I played. Uh, I've been playing my Switch, so I've been playing uh, Saints Row the Third on that, um, and Football Manager. Neither of those games anyone cares about on this <laughs> podcast. So, yeah. Uh, let's get into the news though. Ubisoft cancels plans to increase Division Two gear score cap in this next update. Uh, you stop playing Division, right? Yes. Is there I anything I can do to get you back? I don't think so I just, yeah i don't think I don't, so I don't too find it fun. i don't find it fun i tried i tried when i got so i went away to boston that was the problem and, though 
Yeah, I think if I played at home, I would have, like, yeah, stuck with it more. Definitely. But I played it in Boston, and I was like, oh, when I get home, I'll play it. And then I got home, and I was like, I really, I really want to love you. I just... I just don't. You know, and Trust I don't. me. I, I look in the mirror and say that every day. I really want to <laughs> love you, but I just don't. Sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Ubisoft has announced that it's cancelling plans to increase the Division 2 gear score cap in the wake of feedback from players. Uh, title Update 3, which will launch later this month, was originally set to increase the gear score limit from 500 to 515, with the new higher scored items added to the game. However, feedback from players suggests that this would be a bad move. The, the increase would make all higher tier character builds obsolete and immediately add they all the 500 weapons and items with the raid due to go live shortly it would also mean the effort by all the players to upgrade characters to max gear score uh, level in preparation would be undone quote we don't want to uh, invalidate your progress and we heard that feedback loud and clear from our community your gear score your builds are important to you and to us ubisoft said in the update on the division 2's website um there's some other stuff going on here that they said what's going to happen with uh, gear such as uh, raid gear will now drop at uh, 500 uh, priority hard missions and challenges will also drop guaranteed 500 gear and if your character's average gear score is 500 then heroic mission bosses stronghold bosses boss uh, bounty bosses and control point ultra level fours will all reward you with 500 too this was actually one of the ones that I didn't think about. Because in in a... Uh, once I saw the title, I was a bit annoyed. Because, again, I love the vision. I love loved the, the grind in that game. I love playing it. Um, and, like, obviously, 500 for, to 515 is, like, a big thing. And that would have been cool for us to do. And I was like, oh, that sucks. And I was like, oh, actually, no, that makes a lot of sense. If yeah. if everyone... Not me. Again, I, I've not really done a lot of building, um, gear building, uh different builds and stuff I, i've got to 500 and i've done a little bit i've probably got enough to be able to do the raids no problem um but if you've been playing this game for 200 hours let's say um and you've you've got your perfect build and you're ready for the raid and stuff like that and then you go in um and it's all 515 it sort of ruins what you just did one thing i will yeah. say actually because i did play division for like two minutes the, the dark zone is is i can't touch it anymore again and it sucks because people have got god builds, and I fought the whole thing. I walked through the door. Do you remember in Division One they, and like Division Two? It's like, oh, we fixed that. Nope, I got melted. I got right killed away. quicker than they could. The gunners could kill the people because their builds were so godly. Mm, that's uh, and I was like, that's not oh, a good sign. okay, I'm just gonna stay as far away from the dark zone as possible because it's just could not that fun. Be the specific dark zone you were in. I tried two dark zones and died twice. Oh. Uh, Hmm, yeah, not a good sign. No. Have uh, you done any of the PvP stuff in that? No, I haven't. Didn't touch it. Sat okay. here and was like, yes, I want that. That's going to be good. Duh, duh, so duh, much duh. variety. And then didn't touch it. Not even not even looked at it. Not even once. So weird. They they must... They I don't know what the numbers are, but I've not seen any streamers even stream it. So I'm assuming that must have been like, damn, we worked on this and no one cares. No yeah. One cares. I mean, it's not very prominent person- in the game either, though. I admit. Like... Even when you get to the end, it's not like, oh, you should try out this one. It's never like, play it, play it, play it, which is in one way a good thing, but in another way, it's like very forgetful as well. That's even there. Yeah. Um, multiplayer games for third person shooters don't, to do in general, I feel like, mm. unless you're like Gears of War. Gears, yeah. Which has, it has such like a long history with multiplayer. I don't think that's ever the main appeal. I'm trying to think game. of like a decent third person shooter multiplayer game. Online people talk player. yeah yeah i can't gears is can't. the only one that comes to mind yeah um on the xbox front especially uh yeah. Hay- halo's first uh halo's first every everything everything's really first. Really first the last like multiplayer game that i can think of would have been ghost recon advanced warfare that came out on the 360 yeah and he has three ages i remember ago. Yeah, yeah 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 um even like even if you look at like I suppose other side, PUBG, like, I PUBG, I which don't is, count. Which is weird because you go Royals. into first. Yeah, it's not a first. Again, that's a weird one, right? It's like I don't. Yeah. It's not not that it's, it's, com- it's exact genre we're talking about here because battle royale yeah. when it's only this genre. Yeah, I I mean like I Fortnite and PUBG would be the closest thing you could think of. Yeah, but that's not really what the what like we're talking about right here. 
because that's like all like go loot up and everything i'm talking about you get in you play your goal is to kill somebody yeah whatnot um yeah Mm. it'd be an interesting one it will be an interesting one next up u.s senator new bill would ban selling loot boxes to children a republican u.s senator josh halloway uh how yeah halloway how Holly, 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 yeah. Again, I got there in the end. I was, the W was like, "Oh, all right, let me try sound this out in my head." Hmm. Announced Wednesday, his plans to introduce a bill that would ban microtransaction in both console and mobile games, according to the Hill. What's the Hill, Gresh? I'm not familiar with that. <laughs> you don't I read assume this? it's a magazine. Uh, come I don't on, know. come on. Uh, the legalization. Um, the legislation, sorry, which was outlined Wednesday as to protecting children from abusive game act is focused on the, those under the age of 18 years old who are purchasing in-game goods through micro uh, marketed free to play games that have the ease I'm reading this really poorly. Let me try that again. Market is free to play games that have easy in-app purchase for kids to buy in order to re- uh, release more content. In a statement, Hawley said, social media and video game prey, uh, prey, video games prey on users' addiction. S- sip. I Siphoning. So, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, would not have got that. Again, you can't put, you can't, dyslexic mind. My, the words just totally didn't get that. Our kids, attentions from the real world and extracting profits uh, for, <laughs> for soaking uh, compulsive habits. No matter this business model's advantages to tech industry, one thing is clear there is no excuse for exploiting children through such practices. Again, apologies for butchering that story, but you got the premise of what we're trying to talk about here. How do you feel about this? Again, this oh. is an American thing. I'm glad I got you on. This is not a UK thing. We just have porn, uh, porn bands. We don't get anything. Else. Right. <laughs> you, go, you guys don't have the loot box bands. You guys got the porn, porn band, bands. Porn right? bands. Jeez. Uh, um, I like, I agree with this, like ban it from anybody who's under 18 from buying loot boxes. So uh, a game like Fortnite would be fine. Would be, no, a game like Fortnite would be fine currently, but I'm saying they say that they did have, um, loot boxes. Would, is it a game that's under 18 age rated or had, how, how do you, how do you do that? Is it just a games that are, are. Um, kids games they say like games like even like on the app store i know like xbox don't really care about that but you understand what i'm saying um, it's like how would that i don't work think it forward? would mess with esrb rating got you because i don't think bills directly affect them. i'm pretty sure they're their own board if i'm not mistaken yeah um so again like okay, star imagine... wars perfectly star wars star wars yeah. battlefront 2 perfect game perfect example that is a kids game designed for kids to play obviously it has a mature audience as well as so a game like that would be wouldn't be able to have this right i did no all they would have to do, my assumption from this would be all the game would have to do is put apart at the start of the game that says check if you're over 18 ah interesting so then you just age gate it you put in your age and then yeah. that's you don't how, even have to it's so not even like serve, a real age gate. yeah they it's don't just serve like uh, microtransactions to those so they would miss out on a portion of skins and things of that nature i assume yeah what I don't know exactly. No, we don't know. This is all speculation. Um, we're just, we're yeah. just this it's is what not we even do here. confirmed that this bill <laughs> no. will pass. Yeah, he just plans on introducing. Oh, no, he's a Republican. Yeah. Do we trust those? I don't know. I don't understand U.S. politics. Depends. Oh, Christ! Didn't want to go out and live there. <laughs> Smart man. Smart man. He wasn't. He wasn't prepared. <laughs> wasn't prepared. Was to, right. Wasn't prepared to say yes. No. Maybe. I don't know, I don't Mr. Know. Josh Howley. Okay, I can't judge his character. You mean Howley? 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 Um, you know, I can't speak. Whatever his name yeah, is. Exactly. No, I'll go around. You can't say his name. Can you trust him? I mean, if we went by that, Chris, I couldn't trust literally <laughs> anybody. Probably couldn't trust me. I mean, Christ. What's your name? Let me go back in my Twitch chat mm. and find out what your name is. Let's have a don't look. try it. Uh, two Fresh Crash. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Two Fresh Crash. Uh, moving on. Speaking of Fortnite. Fortnite Season 9's patch notes have uh, been unveiled. Uh, V9.0, which includes details of Fortnite's Season 9 and its new location features and more. Fortnite Season 9's Battle Pass is available now for 950 V-Bucks, which is 9... Uh, Sorry, I was about to say nine dollars fifty pounds. I was totally about to butcher <laughs> all of that, which is nine. Uh, sorry, nine dollars and fifty cents, uh, and includes uh, includes 
100 levels and over 100 new rewards. New uh, points of interest that have emerged from destruction of the volcano include the Neo titled and the Mega Maul. A semi-automatic uh, combat shotgun has been added that holds 10 shells, fires 9 per pellets per shot, and, and has a tight spread and a fast fire rate one of the biggest new features from 9.0 is the slip streams a wind transport system which sounds a lot like uh uh apex legends if you don't ask me a system oh. of wind tunnels that carry players around i don't know if that is what it is i've not played it i'm gonna play it after we stream uh finish this but yeah that's what it sounds like uh which means you can move faster and a bunch of other stuff if you care yeah. about fortnite go to the website and get more information chris you're gonna come back and play with me oh maybe a bit yeah i mean it's just one of those games like oh i'll update it i'll play it i can it's an yeah. easy jump in get killed five times i'm done yeah type of game if i'm doing good you know maybe maybe six maybe or seven six games. games exactly yeah. exactly you i might get a win i might get a top 10 and that to me is a win a top 10 nowadays exactly these kids can build really fast and it, it, yeah. it's hard it's really <laughs> getting hard. top 10 is like all you need in a lot of these games especially like Fortnite with the building like i get top 10 like that's a win in my book i write that down in my ledger when, oh, before i go to sleep like dude Dear I won diary. Fortnite today. Dear diary. Yeah. I won at Fortnite. And then my diary comes back. Did you win? Win or did you win? I'm like, <laughs> I, I just I won. I didn't win. Yet. I won. Just one win. <laughs> but yeah, so that is out. And I'm gonna jump back in and see what it's like. Uh next up, EA to change development and release strategy in wake of Anthem's Troubles launch. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, after Anthem, EA's latest big release. I need to sorry, make this text way bigger because it's very small. Let me try that again. EA's latest big release uh, that failed to live up to expectations, the company is planning to make changes to its development and release strategy. PC uh, Gamer reports that EA's CEO, Andrew Wilson, talked about some of the problems facing the industry when it comes to developing huge games like Anthem. During the company's latest financial results <laughs> conference call. No, what was wrong with Anthem is you didn't give it enough time and you forced upon a bunch of shit. But sure, I'll let you talk. I'll let you talk. Quote. The reality is, it's not just an EA challenge. It's an industry-wide challenge, says Wilson. You're moving from what was internally a Bioware game, which would somehow be between 40 and 80 of offline, uh, sorry, offline play to 40 to 80 offline play plus 100 or 200 or 300 or... Elder, of elder games that happen with millions of other players at scale online wilson also talked about the differences between releasing such games in the west compared to the asian market in asia such games are released by having multiple tests or soft launches in smaller communities before launched at full scale in the west wilson said there is a tendency to st stick to more traditional hype market and build and then set a release for a larger audience quote as the game got bigger uh that sorry as games have got bigger that system isn't working as well as it has done in years gone by so what you should expect from us is not is that it's not just about uh, changing the development process in the game it's just about changing the qa process in the game although both of those things are being uh, changed dramatically uh, instead our organization right now but inside our organization right now but it is also comes down to changing how we launch games wilson explained i'm done with this no, yeah. you no, put out... we talked about. Go on, go on, please, please. We talked about division earlier, yes. and I don't play division. I don't. Like, no, I don't enjoy it. But like, immediate feedback: we're raising the cap to five fifteen. Fans, we don't like that. Mm -hmm. We like our loot. We like the way it is. We want to work on builds. Yep. Cool. We're not changing it. Anthem, man, I really wish I could work on my builds. It'd be cool if I got more loot. Uh, Bioware, EA. Mm, no, I think we like how our game is. <laughs> Once we have better updates, we'll hit you back on that. Mm -hmm. Player? Yeah, I'm not playing this game anymore. Uh, this is ridiculous. Um, I mean, I get... to, to, there's some points in here that he makes he makes good yeah. points. Of like, yes, games have changed, and etc, etc. But do not come out... EA have now, now had some big misses. Unfortunately. 
But EA have had some big misses. We're going to talk about Monster Hunter in a second. We're going to talk about a bunch of yeah. other games that have done things right. So EA have to change the way they do things. Not the world needs to change. And that's how this was worded, which is, it's not just an EA thing. Yes, it is. Not, I not... think if you looked out that little part, it wouldn't be as bad. It's still like, a lot of this is sort of like, well, it's not really our fault. It's the changing industry, whatever, whatever. But now they're like, it's not just our problem. It's everyone. It's an industry problem. And to, mm -hmm. in some degree degrees yeah. he's correct it is the industry thing a lot of other companies do struggle with this but anthem is not is not the way don't put anthem in this like anthem yeah. is bigger than this and we know that thanks to some great reporting like this is not just an anthem thing this is a an everything thing and ea really need to go back to the dream board i'm so interested to see how that new star wars game does but it's single player it's it's all of these things. I wonder what FIFA is going to be like. I wonder, like, all these games are coming very soon, and I wonder if they will listen. Or are we going to get the same bullshit in FIFA where they don't care about pro clubs and they don't care about the career modes and they only care about Ultimate Team? Because this year might be the last year they get to exploit everyone on Ultimate Team with all the new laws coming in. We don't know. Right. Yeah. We Definitely. don't know. Uh, Industry Insider Z Huge X. Uh, tweeted this at conference call La uh, launch of anthem did not meet expectations for ea players have spent over 150 million hours in the game since launch team has focused on current fixes for it battlefield firestorm battle royale became the biggest battlefield live service event ever which is shocking to me yeah i've heard no people one talk really about it. like it i've heard people I, talking about it i haven't heard anybody who's played it, it says they really liked it when it first came out it had some loot issues but Apparently they fixed those and the game's a ton of fun. Um, I watched a bit of gameplay for it. It does actually look like not a horrible BR game. But it looks it's... fine. It's just I don't want to buy Battle Five, uh, Battlefield Five to get it. This was a like a twenty dollars experience. I would have bought it for twenty dollars. Agreed. Same. Because it's another Battle Royale. Probably still on the store. Yeah, I buy a lot of my games digitally. It's still probably fifty, sixty right. pounds. So they gotta start lowering digital games a lot quicker. Soon. Soon. Soon come. I my think friend. so. Next I generation. So. I think because yeah. I think we're at that point now where they're always, they don't care the about focus. they don't care about GameSpot game where even like Amazon Amazon don't really care about anything so it's they're not worried about peeing them off so yeah I think soon come soon come we do get yeah. sales more often than we ever did but true very true but yeah but I, I it's just that time like a game needs to drop in price like not just yeah. from a sale it just needs to come down from yeah. if it's if it's a 50 i'm gonna go for dollars so if it's a 60 dollar game it needs to come down to 40 if it's been out and it's not selling yeah. well and we know that again we all know the information nowadays that's the difference how many times do we talk about like oh wait to get this game when it's cheaper and if you're a mostly digital guy and you don't go to gamestop mm -hmm. and you don't like shopping on amazon yeah. and whatnot when does that come when there's a sale exactly yeah, you have to wait. And a lot of the new games, you have to wait like, till Christmas. You have to wait till summer. You have to wait till Easter. Yeah. You have to wait till one of these, these things they can market around the sale. Which or is the weird. developer decides to do like Capcom sale, yeah. where all our stuff's on sale. Which the, the, again, they have gotten better. I'm not sitting here trashing Xbox, 100%. especially Xbox. And they do like their weekly sales as well, but it's mainly a lot of smaller games and stuff like that. So, yeah. Next up, Monster Hunter World Iceborne. I hope I said that right. Is it Iceborne? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Release date announced. New monsters shown. Monster Hunter World's Iceborne expansion has finally has a release date on console set to come out on PS4 and Xbox One on September 9th. Uh, the Monster Hunter Twitter account also said that the PC release would follow this winter. Uh, which we assume, blah, 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 we don't care about PC. Uh, first gameplay from Iceborne was shown during Sony's State of Play. I'm sorry, guys. This is where it was shown. Don't come after me. All right? That's where it I got shown. I can't believe you fixed. That's where it got shown. Including a new look uh, at the returning monsters and uh, as well as a new snow mechanic and a pelican ability. Monster Hunter World, is that the game we all go back to? Is that the one? Man. I'm, yo, fix, I'm down. I'm not. <laughs> I, I knew it. I had a feeling like I just nah, fix. I I played like forty hours of that game and I just nah nah. You didn't play with me, fix. I don't think it would have made a difference. I know. Sorry to say, I don't think it would have made a difference at all. Sorry. I don't. I've still got the game, and again, again, if people come and say they want to play that game, they DM me and they message me, and they're in my Twitch chat saying it, then maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll do it, but. I don't know. I don't know. Next up, Monster Hunter World has sold, has shipped over 12 
million units. Monster Hunter World, the best-selling Capcom game ever, continues to increase its record-breaking numbers, having now shipped over 12 million worldwide units. Crash, get out of my chat. Um, <laughs> that's amazing for them, so congratulations. And um, obviously, I'm happy that Capcom are doing well. They have, have the, the one franchise I care about the most. Will we get Resident Evil 8 soon? Yes. Will we get Resident Evil Remake 3 soon? Yes. So I'm very excited. Very, yeah. very I've... excited. I feel like more credit needs to be given to Capcom. I mean, they They've come from the dead, mate. 180. They come from yeah, the dead. Yeah, they were talking about, like, selling off. Like, you know, we're going to have to sell soon. Who Who's going to buy us? Yeah. We got Microsoft. We got Sony. We got a few other people. I think EA was in talks. So glad that. I really hope we get a new Dead Rising, though. Which, I know the Dead Rising team's dead, and they got rid of it. I wonder if they could just reboot that franchise altogether. I wouldn't be surprised. I don't think it'll be their focus right now. No. But I think in a few years, I th- I wouldn't be surprised if we see something. I hope so. Uh, Dead Rising 1 remake or a Dead Rising 2 remake. No, let's, let's do two. Lines. Let's not do one. One wasn't very good. It'll probably two be one. Two was brilliant. No, no, it no, makes no, more no. Sense. Two was really good. It makes more sense to do one. No, no, no. Let's not do that. I hear you. And I trust you. I've never been a Dead Rising guy, and I trust you. I know. Dead Rising 2 is so good. You played Dead Rising 2? No. It's on Game Pass. It's so good, dude. It's funny. It's ah. Oh, let's play some Dead Rising too. Download it. Don't just drink your coffee at me. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> All right, fine. Uh, next up, Scalebound. I know. Who would believe that we'd be talking about that? Developer laments Microsoft taking brunt of blame for cancellation. Speaking with Video Game Chronicles, Platinum Game Studio head. Ah, damn Japanese names. The, it, yeah. Atsushi, Atsushi Inaba. Inaba. I was I was getting there. Uh, Discuss Scalebound's cancellation and, and noting both Microsoft and Platinum fouled when it came to the project. Quote, I think there are areas where we could have done better. And I'm sure there are areas that Microsoft, as a publishing partner, wish they could have done better. But, uh, done better. Because nobody wants a game to cancelled, Inaba said. Platinum originally developed Scalebound to be an exclusive for Xbox. Microsoft uh, even renewed its trademark on the uh, on the name two years ago. There aren't any plans to move forward with it, blah, 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 blah. End of this next quote, which is, obviously we can't go into details about it because there are rules of engagement as a developer. We want to make sure that the publisher who gave us a chance to make a game in the first place isn't treated poorly, he said. I think that's so cool. That they've come out and been like, hey, yes, 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 we, they made mistakes, but we made mistakes too. And I, I, I do agree that we do always go Microsoft cancelled, oh, oh. we never yeah. go platinum, we're bad. I like, I, two points. First one is, did Microsoft get all the blame for this? Yes. Okay, because I never took it as Microsoft, I took it as the game didn't work and it was sort of a... I unanimous think, agreement well if you i think when you gotta go to like the the the, the, the wars it's like well you cancelled this and they because you gotta think they cancelled scalebound and there was another game they cancelled uh oh. not long after it as well um i can't remember where it was but and yeah, microsoft they were, were known they at were, the time they were like in this place stuff. they were in this place where it was just like microsoft were getting dumped on especially in the you know the fanboy wars um right so yeah it's, it's cool to see pl- someone from platinum come out and say this and uh, oh. yeah, I'm, I'm interested. I'm interested to see. I think this means that Platinum and Microsoft are, might be working on something. You would assume. Yeah. Would assume if it, if so. Platinum's going out their way to like give Microsoft some good press. You, you would assume, or maybe they're just good people. Maybe. That's 100% a possibility as well. We Either way, see. kudos to them. Exactly. Um, I was meant to be getting through gold, but I forgot to put it on the show notes, so don't worry about it. Let's get into Fix is Sad. We did get one email. Remember, you can email him, myxboxandmepodcast at gmail.com. i tell you what I'd love. I'd love for people to send in some segment ideas. My Xbox and me has been the same way. I've changed it a tiny bit for three years, but it's been the same way for about three years. If you've got any ideas of, like, different segments you'd like or things of that nature, I'd love to hear some ideas. I've been doing this a long time, and I need a change up. Please do. But this email says, hello. I hope all is well, kicking butt and playing some games. My question is about Randy Pitchford. Is Borderlands 3 getting a little overshadowed uh, overshadowed by Randy Pitchford? I don't see a lot of talk about the game anymore, which is crazy for me. Uh, I'm hearing All I'm hearing is Randy versus everyone else. Randy versus Game Informer. Randy versus Trey Baker. Randy versus David Eddins. Randy versus uh, Randy this, Randy that. 
We should be talking about Borderlands 3, and yet we are not. It's so bad that, that I'm emailing you this question, asking this. Cheers for everything you do. Stay glorious, Mr. Moody. I think you hit the nail on the head, Moody, if I'm honest with you, dude. Um, I don't know Randy Pitchford personally, but yeah, he's done a poor job. As the, his job is to put the limelight on the video yeah. game. And he hasn't done that with his poor choice of word when it comes to the microtransactions, uh, which... And then his reaction. I think his reaction and, to that's worse than his wording. Exactly. And then his reaction to it. And then, obviously, we've had the whole claptrap uh, debacle going on right now, which is is like a public... It's just... Uh, look, as someone who has hissy fits often, I can totally relate. But when I'm having hissy fits, I'm not I'm not putting at risk a multi 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 million pound company and game. I'm just putting yeah. myself at risk. And when I have a hissy fit on Twitter, Randy is a face for for Borderlands, uh, Borderlands for and for, that's the Gearbox is what I was looking for for Gearbox, and it just reflects so poorly on all of them, mm. unfortunately. And yeah, movie, this, we should be talking yeah. about a great game that is. That is going to tell a great story. That is is a uh, extension onto the rest of this great franchise. But instead, we're talking about him rowing about money with people. And I, even in my chat, I was playing um, pre sequel, and someone come in was like, "Oh, did you see the stuff about him and the the USB which happened a while ago?" And I'm like, "I don't care. I care about the game." Yeah, and that's this that's is... actually why I've not reported on most most of this. Like I did the Troy Baker one a couple of weeks ago, and then like the Claptrap one I was like, Do you know what? This isn't news. This is just two yeah. people having an argument it's on Twitter. Drama. And if I wanted that, I'd start a drama alert like Keemstar. Like Jesus, <laughs> I don't know. I'm good. I'm good. Like yeah. a vi- imagine a video game version of that. Hmm. Maybe I just come into something. Yo, you got it. Fix. Maybe you, I just want, come you were into talking something. about segments. I maybe I just found one. It's called yeah. the debate. Pum, pum, pum. Yeah. Um, but yeah. This is kind of the issue when you like make somebody the face of a company and um, they <laughs> they lack a sense. This is of what happens when you make someone the face of the company and they're not good at being the face of the company. Yeah. Look at uh, Corey Balrog and everything he's yep. doing right now. He's great. He's His amazing. tweets are amazing. Yep. His like when he decides to argue something, he does it in such an eloquent, eloquent way that yeah. it's like, okay, even if I don't agree with you, I see your point. Um. Look at Hideo Kojima. When have you ever heard of Hideo Kojima fucking arguing with anybody? No, he didn't argue with uh <laughs> he didn't argue with Konami and no. everything people argued for him. <laughs> um so yeah, I think Randy just needs to like sort of chill out reevaluate everything he's doing yep. and realize like if you really believe in your game, let your game speak for you and you don't have to call you. Exactly. You're exactly right, Crash. And I think that's where we're in this week. Thank you all for watching. Let's plug, plug, plug and get ourselves out of here. Crash, what you got to plug this week? Uh, at Twitter, at Crushnick Plays. On Twitch, Crushnick. Twitch.tv4. That's, that's mm. about it. Mm. Uh, I didn't talk about it this week, but yeah, I did do two events. Uh, obviously, I was at the uh, Ghost Recon reveal. Uh, and I got to do a interview with uh, the creative director on A Plague's Tale. Might be a game you've heard of. It's coming out in four days. Uh, I think it comes out next Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, comes out next Tuesday. Uh, that will be up as soon as I am n- not embargoed on it. So that was cool. And yeah, just again, thank you all for your support. And remember, if you do want to support me personally, uh, patreon.com slash mcfix is what keeps the lights on, literally. Um, or if you've got Amazon Prime, you've got Twitch Prime, link the accounts. Or if you just want to become a subscriber over on my Twitch channel, I'd appreciate it. Um, more Xbox and me will be back next week. So by Mike is back next week. And until then, I will love you, leave you, and see you all later. Goodbye. Bye.